So let's take a look at a sales funnel for digital products. This is going to be a strategy and an overview that I'm going to show you using Funnelytics, just overall kind of demonstrating it from a 20,000 foot view. So in the beginning, we're going to have your traffic sources, wherever you're going to be getting traffic, that's going to be up to you. But first thing, what I recommend here, there's like a million ways to do it right, but we're going to start with an opt-in, especially if you're using paid traffic. You know, If you don't use an opt-in, it's going to go straight to a landing page. If someone doesn't purchase, then you know, you've know you lost out on them unless you're going to be retargeting them. But ideally, what you want to do is have an opt-in. It could be a lead magnet. It could also be just something that has an enticing benefit in terms of a headline. And then from there, once they opt in, they're going to go to the sales page. Okay, so this is assuming like a digital product, you're selling it, right? So this could be as an affiliate or this could be for a product you own, okay? So for example, if you had someone opt in, what you can do if you are an affiliate, let's see, where's the thank you page? Do we have the thank you page here? Here we are. So I'm just gonna move back a sec here. So if this was an affiliate, what you could do is go to the thank you page once they opt in. And of course you can have your affiliate link where it would go to the other page, okay? So just showing you that there. So let's delete this. And there we go. So we're back here, sales page. Let's say it's your own digital product. Okay, I just wanted to throw that in there. So this is obviously, you know, headline, copywriting, entice them, click the head to cart. From there, what they can do is go to the order page. Now this is where they're gonna make a purchase. Pretty simple stuff, right? You know, I'm sure you've seen these before. There's gonna be much more that goes on with it too. So from the order page, we're not done yet. We could have an upsell. So this is probably, I'd say there's two great spots to really maximize your sales and your revenue here. One's going to be on the order page. Okay. So normally you go to the order page, they're just buying what they might've saw on the sales page. However, a really great tip for increasing your revenue and sales is going to be adding an order bump. An order bump is simply going to be a little box that says, aside from the original order, they check it off and says, yes, I would also like to add X, Y, Z to my cart for X amount of dollars. Okay. So it's something that complements, but also goes hand in hand with what they're going to be purchasing. So for example, like I say, if you're selling a digital product about a Facebook course where you show them how to get up and running with ads, an order bump could be a live over the shoulder case study showing you how you turn, you know, $100 into $200 for your online business. Okay. So that would be a great little extra. You don't need a whole lot to describe that, you know, just by saying that if someone's interested in Facebook marketing and then they say, Hey, here's my done for you campaign where you can check it out. That's probably going to have a good uptake on it. Okay. So that's an example of an order bump. The other good one here is the upsell. So what else can go along with that? Maybe it could be live coaching, right? Maybe it could be something else that's going to be given to them. Whatever it's going to be, you know, if it's maybe a retargeting course, okay? Something kind of similar, but different at the same time. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be up to you. But obviously, just kind of think of if you were approaching this, what else would you really like, okay? And make sure it's not something that has to go with this. I've seen people do that. It's not really an upsell. That's why would you like fries with that works so well because they're getting a hamburger, you know, would you also so like fries with that, it accommodates it. It goes with it, but it's also separate at the same time. Okay. So after the upsell, let's see, we're going to eventually have like the download page. Okay. Pretty standard stuff. You know, when someone purchases something, you want to make sure that they actually get what they're buying. Right. So that's going to be good there. So all in all, there's still a little bit more that we can talk about here. So let's see, we have our actions and we have our sources. So let's look for E. There's G, email. So keep in mind when someone opts in, they're gonna be getting emails, right? Okay, so the first email, let's just say they get this one and where are they gonna go from there? This is gonna bring them back to the sales page in case they haven't bought. What's gonna happen there next day, and there's a lot of automation you can do with this. If they still haven't bought, they're going to obviously, let's see go back to the sales page. And maybe you wanna do one more, where maybe you have like a coupon or a discount, like last ditch effort. Hey, if you sign up before the end of today, you know, you can get 10% off, whatever it's going to be. And the cool thing that also happens is that once they purchase, they go to the order page, let's say they reach here, that means they've made their purchase. What can happen is they can now go on a buyer's list. So they get removed from all these emails. Let's say this. I'll put it under here because it like starts there, right? And then now you can start giving them more buyer emails. So this will be like, here's your download, right? This will kind of like link to here. 
just to help increase the chances that they like don't lose out on where to go. I've seen people purchase products before many times from me. And what happens is they're like, hey, I, I didn't get my download. I accidentally clicked off right here, X. That's another good reason why to send like an email. So what happens is there's the regular leads list and there's a lot of automations. You can do this easily with many email marketing um, autoresponders. They're gonna get removed from this and go onto the buyers list. And once again, here's your download, here's where you can access it. It's also a good idea to add some unannounced bonuses, just another Another great idea to build goodwill and increase the value upon what they purchase. So overall, I know it sounds like a lot going on here, but it's a pretty simple uh, sales funnel when it comes to digital products. So in the beginning, we're opting in, right? So we're getting the lead. From there, when they opt in, they go straight to the sales page because if you have a digital product, you probably want to sell that, right? Where you're going to have all the stuff on here. And generally, it's like click to add the cart button. That's going to be the main goal right there. So the main goal here is getting a lead. Main goal is getting interest so that they click on the add the cart button. They get taken to the order page. And obviously, the main page here is to make a purchase. If they happen to have that order bump too, that is even better. Okay. From there, they purchase, they move to the upsell. Okay. They also get moved to the buyers list. And from there, the main goal is make a purchase. If not, they can say no. Whether they say yes or no, they get all their downloads here. And of course, since they are now a customer, they get moved onto the buyer list and they get an email saying, this is where you can access what you purchased and so on and so forth. So that's going to be a sales funnel strategy for digital products. Pretty simple. You've probably gone through them if you've purchased digital products before. Some might be a little bit different. Some might be a little bit more quote unquote advanced, but it's a lot of the advanced stuff you don't see in the background. For example, when you arrive on the opt-in list, you might get a little pixel like your retarget. So if you see, if you've ever been on a page before and then you keep seeing ads for them on like Google, wherever you sign in somewhere, maybe on Facebook, that means you're being retargeted. So that's another strategy. Or maybe they have a different retargeting pixel that once you do opt in, you keep getting sent like back to a page like this. Obviously, that's where more of the advanced stuff comes in. But overall, do want to keep it as simple as possible for you. This is a great way to get up and running when it comes to selling digital products using a sales funnel. And that should just about do it. If you have any questions, you can feel free to leave a comment down below. We'll also leave a link in the description should you want to try out a sales funnel or landing page builder. They can help you put together something just like this. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.